standing up in McKinney. This is According to Callus. It is the last day of July, 2023. 30 years ago today, I married the love of my life. 30 years have gone by and she still is the love of my life. And I have two grown children that I would imagine completely believe that based upon what they have seen growing up. It was not easy. <laughs> At times it was a pain in the keister. But we're here. We made it. And we're going to keep going. I'm not done yet. And I'm fairly certain she isn't either. Coincidentally, on the 28th of July, my wife successfully completed her master's program. And I'm very proud of her for doing so. And... I gotta tell you, I couldn't be happier at this moment in time. I have a job that I don't hate, that I actually quite like, actually, uh, which is a challenge in today's day and age, finding work that is fulfilling and that you can enjoy. So, kudos there. I have a wife that I still like to be around and still want to spend time with, which apparently... After this amount of time, I'm told, uh, isn't always the case, even if you do stay married. So I'm grateful for that. I have uh, one daughter about to finish college one more year, and the other one is off in the working world, doing her own thing, and independent. I'm, I'm really happy about all of that. You know, you don't get everything. You certainly don't get everything all at once. But that's a lot to be happy about. And at a 30-year anniversary, which I got to be honest, probably 30% of the people I knew when I got married never thought we would make it. Oh, they weren't they weren't so rude as to tell me to my face, don't do it. And I'm certain some of them uh, were secretly praying that uh, when I was gone in the Navy, I would stay gone. Uh, and, and I don't fault them for that. Uh, everybody has a life story. Everybody has things that... Uh, you know, altered and changed who they are and what they are. And, you know, getting where you're at and staying on the same course and being the same person is not always attainable. So I will just tell you flat out, I am not the same person I was 30 years ago. A lot of that I would credit to my wife, uh, the Lord working through her, especially, uh, especially my raising my two daughters. Uh, a lot of that can be attributed to just the life that we have lived. And 27 years, actually it'll be uh, 1997 is when we moved here. So yeah, 1997, July of 1997, or is it 1998? Oh man, I can't even remember now. Uh, yeah, July 1997 is when we moved here. So 26 years been in Texas. The vast majority of my uh, married life, the majority of my actual life, I've been right here. And I got to tell you, it's not all been a bed of roses, but I'm very happy with where I'm at. And I know I'm going to keep continuing doing what I'm doing. So I appreciate you all letting me indulge in the first couple of minutes of my own program to uh, heap a little praise on my wife and share in my happiness. Uh, but as they say, the show must go on. So here it is, episode 465 uh, by Podbean's uh, recollection. I'm actually at 500 episodes, but I only got 465 numbered. So kudos, right? Success. <clears throat> We're hovering just shy of 180,000 downloads. And again, I want to do a special shout out to my four listeners out there. And for those of you that I have actually met and spent time with in real life, IRL, I uh, appreciate the feedback that you've given me. I appreciate the support. And uh, I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. So here we go. All right. On with the rest of the program. Before we get there, let me remind you, you shall... <laughs> like, share, and subscribe to the program if you feel so motivated. You shall, if you feel so motivated, 
and impressed to go and rate and review this here program. Help me out here, folks. That's all I ask for. We don't collect any money. I don't bill anybody. I don't even ask for money. This is my labor of love. Hopefully, at some point, I can do something with it that uh, actually causes me to get a net positive out of it. But, hey, for where I'm at, I'm not going to (sighs) complain. You know what they say, God and country, right? (laughs) So, here we go. All right. So, I already kind of hit the first bullet point here. Yeah, I, I still love my wife. And you know what? I love my country. I love the fact that I... I live in Texas, and I love Texas. I served my country willingly uh, in active duty from 1992 to 1994, and then spent another year in the active reserves. Uh, I want to say it was 95 to 96. At this point in time, I don't love my government. I don't don't trust my government, and I certainly uh, do not love... Or trust what they've done to my Navy. That being said, my oath that I took is still binding, still ever present. And I used to tell people I've only taken two oaths in my life, one to my family and one to my country. That's probably not exactly true um, because, you know, you turn your life over when you accept the gift of salvation. So I guess in a way that's an oath to serve God, right? So you're going to serve God first and then man. So if you, if you reorder your life, right? At least how I try to look at it is you've got your God, family, country uh, line up there, right? If, you, if you're in line with what God wants you to be doing and in my world, that means Jesus Christ and you can choose to think otherwise. And I'll just simply say, I believe you're wrong. That being said, I'm not going to fight with you, not going to call you names, not going to abuse you, not going to do anything that would uh, cause you to have any hate. It's not helpful at this point. So what does that mean next? Well, then I have family, right? So I gave an oath to my wife and by default, my children, I, I did everything I could to give them a comfortable, agreeable uh, life by Western standards right? Does that mean I was a perfect father? Heck no. Does that mean I didn't screw up? Yeah, it does. Does it mean that uh, there weren't challenges and difficulties? Yep, they were there too. I think all of it creates a stronger, better person in the long run, but I'll assure you that sometimes it's not a lot of fun going through it at the time. But here we are, right? And that leaves us thirdly country. I often joke, and I've said it on this show, And I will revisit a couple of uh, statements that I've made over the course of the show that are refrains, if you will. You know, my oath doesn't expire. I take that very seriously. What I do when I'm not working a job that pays me and when I'm not specifically taking care of my wife and children is I do what I can to save the republic. And yes, some of that said tongue in cheek. Some of that is expected to elicit a groan. Some of that is understood to be um, a lighthearted jab on where we're at in today's world. But the reality is someone's got to do it. I felt uh, called to do it. I feel drawn to continue to do it. And until somebody tells me to stop, I'm going to continue to do so. That means I'm going to do this podcast trying to make the difference right here in McKinney, Collin County, Texas. I'm going to continue to be involved in politics so long as I can find a beneficial outcome. And let me tell you, sometimes that is challenging, right? Because you don't always get what you want, but if you do a good job and you negotiate well, you get most of what you want and you keep moving forward. And that's really the biggest lesson I've learned in the last 10 years or so of active involvement, local politics and the Republican party. But that also taught me that while I might be dismayed, disheartened and (laughs) distraught over how certain things happen and how uh, certain things play out, that doesn't mean that I give up. doesn't mean that I write it off. It doesn't mean that it's irretrievable or irredeemable. We're all fallen humans. We're all, you know, falling short. So 
we have to work together. We have to continue to improve the situation. And that looks different for everybody everywhere. And everybody's able and willing to do different things. So I can't tell you there is an exact way to make the difference. I can't tell you there's a specific way to fix things. I can't make promises that I can't keep. But I will tell you if you do something right here, right now, where you're at, and you do it every day, it will consecutively build up. It will be a consistent outcome and it will make a change. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's important to you. But what I am going to tell you is I have made the sacrifice of my time, my efforts to continue to to (laughs) do in my words, save the Republic. That doesn't mean you're going to agree with me. It doesn't mean that you're even going to necessarily find what I'm doing to be helpful or the most efficient way of doing things. And that's okay. Do your own thing. Do your own thing. You know what? A friend of mine calls it being on the bus, right? We're all on the bus going down the line. We're all headed whatever direction. Uh, For the purposes of this discussion, we're going to say we're headed due north, right? To the North Star, we're headed true north. Somebody might choose to get off when you get to Kansas. Somebody might make it to uh, North Dakota. Somebody might go to Canada and somebody might go straight to the North Pole. But we're all headed in the same direction. That means we have to all work together as long as we're going in the same direction. That's a challenge for some. The, the, The call to purity, the call to... Uh, perfection is the uh, siren call, right? Be careful. Be careful what you're asking for. Be be careful what you wish for. You might not get what you expect. Doesn't mean it's wrong. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Doesn't mean that it's a problem or an issue long term. Quite possibly, yeah, yeah, it does. But if we focus on that, right? I have bumper stickers. They say, "I love my country, but fear my government." I haven't put them on a car since the 90s, not because I don't believe it, but just because why advertise that's my car? You know, I often use the refrain, you know, you might not care about politics, but politics cares about you. I'm constantly trying to remind people, yeah, I understand this stuff can be boring. It can be depressing, whatever your word is, but if you're not paying attention, they're winning. If if you're not standing up for yourself, they're winning. They're, they're slowly chipping away at people's resolve, people's liberties, people's freedoms. The two are not exactly the same, by the way, but they just keep doing it. And the analogy about the frog in the pot. Yeah, well, it's darn near boiling, folks. Wake up. But if I were to call, if I were to come on here and I throw out red meat for the masses, right? just give you the standard Republican talking points. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd maybe have more people listen. Maybe I, I would, I would maybe get, uh, some more active, uh, re- responses. I, I, you know, maybe be a local celebrity, whatever. None of that matters. I want the truth. The truth is the Republican party doesn't get everything right. The corresponding truth is the Democrat party gets most everything wrong. But they can't, neither one is a perfect solution. Neither one is the solution. If you take out the religious aspects, right? You take out the concept of God, you would say the truth, right? Just the truth. Give me truth. Now, I would tell you that truth is found through Christ. But if you choose to reject that, that's fine. But we should at least be able to agree on truth. But they've been successful in that they destroyed the very concept of truth. They they now routinely say, well, that's your truth. Well, no, no, no. There's not my truth and your truth. There is the truth. There can only be the truth or there's nothing. But we can't even seem to agree on that. You know, it's it's a thing, a meme, if you will, where it says you are here and it's got the overlapping uh, graph showing all the well-known dystopian novels, right? And, and in the middle is where you're at. It's the worst of all perfect wor- or the worst of all worlds. It's the most perfect tyrannical view. Well, we're not there yet. I, I, I find them humorous. I find them educational, but we're not there yet. For all the problems and issues that we have, this is not Nazi Germany. This is not communist Stasi Germany. This is not Mao's China. This is not Stalin's Russia. This is not, you know, pick your 
place, Pol Pot's Cambodia. This is not Rwanda. This is not Yugoslavia. After uh, this, they started their genocidal civil wars there, right? Th- this is not any kind of perfect world by any sense, but it's also not the worst of all per- worst of all worlds. I'm not going to sell you any kind of Panglossian vision, right? The best of all possible worlds. No, I'm not going to pretend to be Cassandra. That is that I see the future and none of you all believe me. But what I am going to tell you is it's clear to me the direction we're going. It should be clear to you at this point that things are not getting better. They are playing games. They are playing mind games. They're manipulating the system. They, the powers that be, however you want to define that. And and I don't care what your preferred conspiracy theory is. All I can tell you is it's not you and I in charge of our own destiny. We might like to think it is. And to a degree, we do have control. And I will tell you, our father in heaven has ultimate say. But there are people that run this earth that, quite frankly, hate us. We have to accept that. We need to move on. We need to do the best job we can right here and there. Or right here and now, excuse me. And wherever you're at, you can't worry about that stuff. You can't get lost in that stuff. You can't let it eat you up inside. The problem is many people that come to this realization, get here, they get filled with hate. They don't necessarily define or focus their hate on any one thing initially, but it eats them up alive. It it causes them to not be able to function. It causes them not to be able to think clearly. It causes them, quite frankly, to be just as equally hateful to others. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe all this is counterproductive. Loving somebody or something does require a sacrifice. If you allow me just another minute or two of personal business here, it's not easy for my wife to love me at times. I know that. Correspondingly, it's not always easy to love my wife. But we do it. It's a concerted effort. It's a good choice. That exact same thing, that mindset translates over to your friends, to your extended family, and honestly, to your country, to your kinsmen, to your people. Now, I had somebody, uh, I think it was quite funny that I used the word clan and then had to immediately communicate the fact that I was referring to clan with a C to indicate family as opposed to the K clan, which... Quite frankly, if anybody ever thought I was in league or aligned with those folks at all, boy, you don't know me very well. But that being said, we know that people listen to things. They hear 30 seconds or five seconds even of what you've said and assume the worst. So I thought about, well, maybe I could use tribe. But I'm also aware that tribe has been co-opted to refer to folks of Hebrew origin or Jewish origin. And usually not in a positive way. Uh, I don't hate the Hebrews, the Jews, or any of those folks. Uh, There's bad people from all tribes, tongues, hmm? nations. So I'm really at a loss. What's the appropriate word? So I'm just going to go with family. Hmm? Family. From now on, I'm going to use family instead of using the C clan or the tribe It's going to be family, right? Extended family, however you want to put it. Because quite frankly, I don't have time. I don't have the energy to deal with people that would get lost in something like that. Or try to portray myself in that kind of light. I haven't done everything right in my life. I'm sure I've said things that are regretful. I'm sure I've thought things that are (laughs) reprehensible. I'm, I'm sure that I fall short of a lot of standards, but the proof's in the pudding. The proof is in your actions. The proof is in your behavior in the consistent work ethic. And there I have no shame. I think I'll borrow a phrase. I, I like to think of myself as an approved workman, right? Those of you who had the benefit of going through Awana as a child, Awana is an acronym, right? Approved workmen are not ashamed. I don't have anything to be ashamed of. 
as far as my work, as far as what I do. That's kind of a high bar to put on yourself. Are you comfortable doing that to yourself? I, you know, I got to tell you, I'm just things that are icky, messy, but on, on the whole, on the grand scheme of things, yeah, I'm not ashamed. I did what I did. I, I am where I am and I am who I am. And honestly, I'm forgiven. And that's all I can ask for at this time. So, <laughs> I'm not sure how, if I want to end it on that note or not, but I will remind you that the change you want to make begins with you, right? I think Michael Jackson made a song called Man in the Mirror, right? Said, look, what, start with the man in the mirror, right? You can say what you want about the guy, but you can still be right about that thing. The idea that we can mandate and make people do things that really want to do. Yeah, that's tyrannical. That's abuse. It's out of line. It's inappropriate. It's one thing when it's your child and you're trying to protect them and raise them up right to mandate they do things a certain way. But when they're adults, they have to learn from their own mistakes. So at some point along the line, you got to start transitioning to, I'm going to make you do this for your own good too. I strongly suggest you do this because it's for your best interests. And, oh, well, you chose not to do that. I'm sorry. Well, now you're going to have to deal with those consequences. And then at a certain point when they're adults and they have to learn, well, maybe dad wasn't such a goof. Or maybe mom and dad actually were concerned about me. Yeah, well, I went through the same thing when I was a kid. Why would I expect any other kid would be different? (laughs) Like I said, start right here. Right now, with yourself, do a gut check. Know what you know, know why you know, why you believe it, and move forward. Start with your neighbors, start with your friends, start with your extended family, maybe your church, maybe your local community. Go from there. And with that, this has been According to Callus. Kind of an odd, different episode, but I'm just trying to lay it out uh we'll be back with a uh texas tuesday of some sort tomorrow and until then i will see you on the other side